For the wing, joined on the desk by Savitz and Cora. Uh, we just saw that last series, guys. Really tight series played by Sky High. Snail struggled a bit. Sky High has now secured one of those top four spots. Uh, Savitz, how'd you enjoy the series? I think it was an interesting series, to say the least. That patron kind of, and, um, and the way that Snail was piloting it was kind of the, the big point of that. But also Sky High played it so well. It's going to be uh, really cool to see if Snail can kind of recover that. Maybe look back on some of the decisions that he made with that uh, particular deck. Cora, what do you think? Yeah, All Sky High definitely played a great series. I'm kind of torn between whether, you know, Snail might just have a little bit less experience with the deck, or maybe the nerves are even getting to him in the first large tournament that he's played in. So it was definitely a, a bit of a rough series for him, but uh, Sky High definitely very deserving of that win. Excited to see where it goes from here. Right, absolutely. As our friends on the sidebar said, uh, Snail still has matches to play, so go home, recover, and kind of think about what he wants to do tonight or tomorrow. But uh, before we get into this third match, uh, we do. We mentioned earlier that we would be revealing another card from the Whispers of the Old God set. So we're going to go ahead and uh, get into revealing that. Uh, Svita, any predictions uh, what class it is? Warlock? Uh, you'd be wrong. Cora? I mean, you already told me, so... Uh oh, well, that doesn't work Shaman? out, though. <laughs> All right, we're going to go ahead and take a look at it right now, guys. All right, it is Stand Against Darkness. It is a five mana Paladin spell summons five, one, one Silver Hand Recruit. So really quick way to populate the board. Uh, you know, if you're playing Paladin, obviously having all those tokens uh, can make for a really powerful board really quickly. Savitz, what do you think? I think it's a really cool card. Uh, five, five for five, divided to five, one, ones. In combination with the Quartermaster, maybe in wild format, that's a really cool combo. Cora. Yeah, I'm, I'm a little torn. It's very reminiscent of Dark Whispers uh, from the Druid class, but without Quartermaster and Standard, it loses a lot of the power that the mid-range Paladin could gain from this. So very similar to Muster for Battle, similar to Dark Whispers. Doesn't give you that Light's Justice, though, so not, not quite as good. With Quartermaster, I think this card would have a lot more potential, so definitely going to be interesting in Wild format. Not quite as strong in Standard. All right, so we're going to go ahead and jump into this third match, and the first player we're going to introduce here is Talion. Yesterday we saw Italian play and a uh, little bit of a rough road. Obviously he's here in the lower bracket playing against Chalky, but Italian has uh, come in here as someone who wants to prove that he belongs with the elite competitors in Hearthstone and truly believes that he has what it takes. So excited to see what we see from Italian this match. He's going to have a tough opponent though. Uh, he is facing Team Dignitas's Chalky. Yeah, a lot on the line for this one. Chalky got defeated yesterday, but he's not out of it yet. But if he loses this one, then <laughs> that's it. Not even a second place. That would be definitely disappointing for Chalky. Disappointing, or disappointing for a lot of the fans at home who, uh, you know, called him as you know the the most likely person to actually go through and win this. But you know what? I had a chance to actually chat with Talion a little bit, and he he's in a good place. They've both got great mentalities going into today, not letting yesterday affect them. So I think it's going to be a really great game. Yeah. I had a lot of opportunities to talk with Chalky over the weekend, uh, and. You know, Chucky was actually very not salty about losing to Nostum. Uh, he, he, you know, Nostum's a good friend of his. He felt really good about it. And, uh, you know, he's come to this place now where he just doesn't believe he's going to lose. He just, uh, I was joking around with him. I was like, well, Chucky, what happens if you lose this? And he said it's impossible. So Chucky has pretty much said he will not be losing. Want to hear what you at home think? Uh, feel free to tweet us with the hashtag HCT, hashtag Chucky, hashtag Talion. Uh, we want to hear what you guys think. Svitz, who do you like? I mean... I have to favor Chucky here. I think he, even though he lost yesterday, he played it really well. He Chucky is a player who comes well prepared. He knows exactly how to pilot all the four decks that he has brought. Um, I have to say he's the favorite, but Talion also a very strong player, and uh, anything could happen. Chucky saying that it's impossible for him to lose. I'm not buying that one, but I do think like he, that exists chances a lot. Yeah, for sure. I think Chalky definitely still the favorite here. I like them both as as players. I like them both as people. Um, Definitely the fans, though, seem to think that Chalky's going to come out on top. Looks like it's about a 70-30 split. Yeah, but I wonder how many of those are actually just uh, blackout Twitter accounts where he's just <laughs> spamming the vote. Blackout, a very vocal supporter of Chalky, but yeah, very much uh, the favorite right now. But we're going to hop into the match in a second here. Chalky bringing that very aggressive style of uh, decks that he brought for the Americas preliminary served him very well. Uh, obviously, the biggest change we saw yesterday, not bringing that aggro druid, bringing mid-range. And I asked him why, and he said it was because he was expecting a lot of control warrior, a lot of freeze mages, which we have seen in this. So, uh, very heady read from him, and uh, obviously Nostum, <laughs> watching that aggro shaman game from Nostum yesterday, he drew really well, had a really powerful aggro shaman start, but uh, I think Chalky's in a good position. Talion, on the other hand, we saw kind of a mix of decks, and they were more control oriented. Talion bringing druid, warlock, warrior, and mage, so uh, mage banned out. 
Paladin band out mm-hmm. for Jackie. Yeah. So uh, what do you make of the bands, Cora? I, they make sense. Uh, Italians, Mage, I believe was a Tempo Mage yesterday. I believe so, I yes. believe so. So that would be very strong against the Midrange Druid. Not too bad against the Shaman or the Warlock either, but we actually haven't seen Chalky's Warlock yet, so I'm interested to see exactly what that is. Uh, he brought that Chinese Zoo variant mm-hmm. in the prelims, so we can expect to see that again, but, I mean, Nostum changed up his Warlock, so we might actually be surprised. I mean, I'm pretty sure that uh, looking at the, the rest of the lineup from Chalky being so all aggressive decks, it has to be the Zoo Warlock. I, I'm like 99.9% sure. Right, and he's also brought up just in passing that he believes that is the strongest deck in Hearthstone right now. Nice. Uh, we're going to see him go ahead and open with there it. There it is. Leroy Sea Giant pretty much tell us exactly Leroy. what we need to know. Uh, Talion opening up with mid-range Druid. So, Zoo and Druid is, is a really old line or a really old rivalry, kind of going back to like 2014, where uh, Druid you know tries to ramp out these big minions, set up the walls. The Druids with the claws early. Speeds, do you see uh, either deck is being favored? Absolutely, the Zoo Lock is the, is heavy favorite here. Mind games went Jockey's way. This is, uh, this is the best matchup he could have hoped for. Predicted correctly that Talion would start out with the Druid. The, the minions from the zoo are just so efficient and so difficult for the, for the Druid's remove. Yeah, actually backstage Chalky said he didn't play badly yesterday. His order was just wrong when it came to his deck. So now, instead of leading with that Druid, he decided to go with the zoo and actually punish Talion's first deck choice, which is that same Druid deck. Right, I believe his uh, his exact phrasing was that uh, Druid is not supposed to be the opener deck, it's the intermission deck <laughs> that, you, uh, that you open with the zoo. So, uh, looking at this, Chalky's going to toss away that Leroy. He's going to toss away the Sea Giant, toss away the Iron Beak, more than likely. Nothing that he needs to silence early and just try to get some of those early drops that Zoo hinges on. Yep, let's see what he finds. Nerubian Egg, Knife Chakra, and Defender Fargus. For Talion, there is that all-important Wild Crowd. Shade of Naxxram, Swipe, also not bad. Oh, Talion has a very strong hand. The only thing about this... Uh, Duke Chinese Zoo deck is that I believe Chalky's variant actually cuts one Flame Imp and one Void Walker potentially. So there might be less early game for the Zoo to actually draw from, making it a little bit more difficult to get those explosive starts against the Druid deck. So especially with Talion's hand being very, very heavy on early game and very efficient removal for, uh, for the Druid, might actually be a little bit more difficult for Chalky. Right. Yeah, that hand from Talion. <laughs> All it's missing is, a, is an inner weight and a, a card draw minion. Those shades, even playing a second shade on uh, w- when he has four mana crystals, that's not too bad. Saving the swipe for later on, potentially. Shade is a very good minion, allowing you to control the board early. You can sit it there and wait. And uh, the Warlock has no inherent ability to just uh, open it up to attack, so it can choose when it comes out. It can trade up with things. So very, very good to see both of those if you're Talion. Chalky could have played the Knife Juggler there, opt to play the Nerubian Egg. Koro, uh, why do you make that play? Uh, the Druid has a lot of very easy removal for that Knife Juggler. You've got Wrath, Living Roots, and Innervate into a Keeper of the Grove. So it's better this way to just put down the Nerubian Egg. You've got the Abusive Sergeant in hand already that you could have traded into something, uh, kill off that egg, bring out the 4-4 Nerubian. So this was just a little bit more of a heads-up play. Also, the Knife Juggler works very well with the Death Rattle on the Egg and the Abusive Sergeant in hand if Talion were to play something like a Darnassus Aspirant or uh, Innervate into a Piloted Shredder or a 5-drop Minion. Sure. Yeah, the Druid is usually kind of limited on the three drops unless there's exactly shade of max dramas the way that Chucky played this was uh was uh, gave uh, gave talion uh, a fairly big chance to not have a reasonable play yeah we do see here that italian has a couple of reasonable plays here uh, that swipe is available the second shade of max dramas i do want to point out that enhanced mechano in Chucky's hand so that is something he kept he brought him with him to america's winter preliminary which is very impactful when you have a minion full of boards, you know, drop Enhanced Mechano, you get some Wind Furies going, some Divine Shields. The board rapidly spirals out of control for basically any class that does not have Twisting Nether. <laughs> what do you think, Savitz? Would you go ahead and play the Enhanced Mechano right now? Uh, I would probably hold on to it for a little bit later. The Defender of Ar- Argus seems so convenient. You can buff your uh, Abusive Search out of Swipe Range, making, that ta- making the Egg taunting those mm-hmm. uh, Shades. It just makes the board so awkward for Talion to deal with. I, I-, I would have a tough time playing anything else but the defender here. Yeah, it's a bit of a tough call, especially with the Enhanced Mechano. You feel like you want to play it when you're going to have the most board presence, but later on in the game against the Druid, it's going to be kind of difficult to build up that board again. So it's it's hard to make the call, you know, when is the exact right time? When am I going to get the most value from this card? But I agree, the Defender of Argus was a much better play here, and it was ultimately what Chalky went with. That's a good draw, because now, now uh, that, that board is kind of calling for the swipe already. And uh, with that one extra mana, he, the living room's roots would allow him to take out an additional minion. Right, and generally speaking, when you're playing against Zoo, 
uh, especially something like mid-range druid, once you get them off the board once, you pretty much just have them off the board. It's very difficult for them to get back on the board, with the exception of, you know, a spell like Implosion, for example. Uh, have a hard time uh, coming back against the druid. So, yeah. how do you go about disarming Shockey's board, Italian? Uh, the this, this swipe is uh, also a, uh, another thing about it is that you kind of want to play it after the implosion, so that makes it a little bit less tempting. But uh, what are the other options, really? Like, what? Hmm. And wh you how do you exactly how exactly do you use the swipe? It's it, it, he's got a couple of options. You could run a shade into the egg, swipe the Nerubian, and then Living Roots the knife juggler. It's not getting the full value out of it, but that knife juggler is definitely very high priority to get off of the board just because of the implosion in the zoo deck, and we see it in Chalky's hand right now. Oh boy, here we go. I believe this might be the enhancer mech on a turn. Getting those divine shields, getting even the wind fury is be so powerful. Right, we do see that Italian chose to expose that one shade of Nax Ramus. So it uh, can be traded out with the egg, but not necessarily something you want to be doing. So I think that Enhancement Mechano does make sense. Cora, what do you think? I actually really like the Direwolf and the Imkang boss this turn. You can go ahead, play the Direwolf between the Argus and the egg, trade into the Lotheb, and then hopefully one of your knives will pick off that spare shade. Fair enough. Seems good to me. I was just like getting a little bit excited about the Enhancement Mechano. It's one of my favorite cards in the, in the, to see in the Zoo Warlock. From the way it looks, oh, mm -hmm. he gets those juggles. Yeah, that's great for right. Chucky. That's definitely going to or change how he interacts with this board. We see him looking to just uh, get rid of the loath up with that Defender of Argus. And I wonder if he puts the egg into the shade. You, you don't really want to be popping the egg on your turn generally. You kind of want to force it to just be there and give your opponent issues. But yeah, goes on and gets rid of that. Uh, board's looking really good for Chucky right now. Even gets that last knife into the shade of Naxxram. It's not too pivotal, but still pretty nice. <laughs> Yeah, Keeper of the Grove comes out, and uh, he's got a couple of options here. He has Swipe, he has Living Roots, he has Keeper of the Grove. Even has Force of Nature he could use. Yeah. Uh, get rid of that Dire Wolf Alpha, possibly get rid of the Knife Juggler. I... And use the Shade, possibly, just to go into that M Gang boss. I think Force of Nature might be uh, the card to go for here. It seems like a lot of those cards kind of like remove the same amount of minions. Let's see, like Swipe and Living Roots. And the Force of Nature is a card that it's really hard to use on a later turn, because... Uh, you can't really wait for the combo in this particular matchup. You can't wait for a roar. And the swipe is easy to cast uh, on, let's say, turn 7, turn 8, in combination with other cards, while Force of Nature with the 6 mana cost does limit the options quite a bit. All right, he does play down that Force of Nature, chooses to get rid of the Knife Juggler, yeah. as well as the Nerubian, and trades the Shade into the Direwolf Alpha. And Chalky's board much less intimidating now, although the Shade is exposed. It might just be time to get that Implosion out. I think that was a really strong play from Talion. That 4-1 is still very much relevant. It, it is likely to go down to that Implosion, but... Uh, Even the Implosion doesn't put uh, Chalky far ahead at all. Rolls a 2 on the Implosion, doesn't yep. actually make much of a difference at all. Talion has that swipe in hand, going to be able to clear off pretty much the entire board. He, he could, if he wanted to, with, with the Living Roots and, and, the, and the Hero power. power. But it might not be worth it. He could just, uh, just swipe that... Go for a go for the hero bar. Maybe even play the living roots for one one. It's scary though to leave minions up when it, when it's a zoo that we're talking about mm -hmm. because there's so many buffs that could potentially be in Chucky's hand. Even Italian's though there's only one actually cut. he's actually very low on health already. He's at 12. We know that Chucky's running that Leroy Jenkins double power overwhelming abusive sergeant. So there's a lot of burst damage potential coming from Chucky's side of the board. Talion having to play pretty defensively at this point in the game can't just play Ancient of Lore for card draw. It's uh, a little bit too risky. Yeah, let's see what he goes for here. He could use the Living Roots for removal. He could also make the 1-1s. I imagine it'll be the 1-1s. Yeah. The way that he did it like this, using his face on the 2 attack minion, it means that he's going for the 1-1s. Yeah, something I want to point out, Chucky hasn't tapped a single time yet. So in seven turns, he just hasn't had the chance to because we've been playing minions. We are finally going to see that tap. And Handsome Meccano uh, is not going to come down on this board. It's not going to come down for some time. It's not one of those cards you can just tempo out, really, unless things are truly dire or you think that's going to be your win condition. Uh, rolls two again on the implosion, so uh, nature of this card uh, obviously has the ability to generate two to four imps, and, and Chalky hit two twice in a row, so. Yeah, you know what? Get the bad luck out of the way early. Save it for when you really needed a kill on a minion with three or four attack, or three or four health. Well, unfortunately, he's not going to have any more implosions for this one, but yeah, if he, uh, if he doesn't win with the Warlock deck this time, he might get another opportunity. And we're just going to see the heal come out. 
Italian just yep. basically trying to keep Chalky out of range. And this Enhanced Mechano still looks really bad, although Defender of Argus makes it a different nice story. Field. Yep, let's see what he gets from the Enhan. So perfect use of his 8th mana. It's going to be... Not bad. Uh, no, okay, not too bad. I was like, how many taunts was there? But he only got two taunts, right? Mm -hmm. Taunt, taunt is generally the one that you don't want. So. Yeah, especially on your already taunted yeah. minions. So maybe right. a slightly below average there. Getting the Divine Shield on the Defender of Argus, not bad. Getting the one Wind Fury, not bad either. But those those two taunts, maybe a little bit wasted. Right, so Keeper of the Grove could come down here. Yeah. Talion has 9 mana. You just go for the Azure Drake and know you're going to top deck swipe. Yeah, I mean, I think that that's the winning play. Just uh, just go for the Drake. Uh, it's kind of desperate. There's only one swipe remaining because he did play one already. But uh, if we was, was to get the swipe, that would be so huge. Uh, the one time the good Doctor does not help much. <laughs> Doctor Boom is going to sit in the hand of Talion. Uh, not yeah. enough mana to play it. And yeah, he can keep her the Grove, something. Yeah, he can uh, survive. He needs to yeah. precisely keep her of the Grove, grove the 3 2 and kill off the Wind Fury. In that case, there would be only five power on mm. the board. He can actually go ahead, Keeper of the Grove, the 2-2, two, two, run the lore into the other 2-2, two, two, and that's 3, 4, 5, 6 on board. So he would die. He's so. still just dead. So he, he has to give her exactly yeah. the 3-2. Two. Italian's going to go oh. ahead and concede game one. Chalky looked like his board was, was kind of demolished. Claws back into it, uses the Enhancer Meccano, Defender of Argus, and takes it. And he's going to go up in the series 1-0. So uh, that's kind of the interaction of Druid, though. Druid is never really allowed to be on its own agenda. It needs to just continue to try to put uh, some kind of defense up against the minions, be it reactive spells, taunts. So uh, is that about in line with what you kind of predicted earlier, Sadiq, in that matchup? Yeah, I mean, this is pretty much how, what I thought how it would go. Chucky's early game, maybe not the greatest mm -hmm. one always. And uh, and Talion had an extremely good st to start, but it's just uh, the matchup favors so the Warlock players so heavily and Chucky played it flawlessly. So this is what happened. Yeah, even near the end when Talion did have, you know, more mana, able to draw those cards, try to remove the taunt minions, even removing those last taunt minions would have still left Chalky with lethal on the board. So having to make very defensive suboptimal plays is just never what the Druid wants to do. And ultimately, uh, Talion just wasn't able to push back from the Zoo's aggression. Right. He's only down 0-1, though. Uh, this is the opening strikes in the series. Talion is a player who, thus far in the tournament, you know, he's come in, he, he's in the lower bracket, but he has had a couple of statement games where he showed that he's willing to bring some uh, some inventive decks and try some inventive tactics. So uh, we had a chance to talk to him, get to know him a little bit more, as he's not one of the more well-known players. But uh, let's see what he had to say about this tournament. I was playing card games for on and off for 10 years before I ventured into Hearthstone. And since starting Hearthstone, I haven't looked back and have been playing it since. I'm just not very intrigued in um, what school has to offer at the moment. I think of eSports not as a career, but a lifestyle. Being able to travel around, interact with fans, and talk about things that you're truly passionate means a lot to me. So I'd rather be doing something that I really enjoy than to be forced into taking a safe route. My parents aren't, the, uh, aren't super supportive. They're kind of uh, conservative, but I think they just really want what's best for me, and they're not going to get in my way. If I tell them that I think uh, pursuing a career in esports is the best thing for me, I think they will accept that. This tournament is going to be the most important tournament I've ever played in. It definitely means a lot to me. If I do end up winning this tournament, I do think it's a validation for myself, and I do think I can call myself a professional player at that point. I, don't really strive for being the best player in the world. I want to be in the conversation of one of the best players in the world. This tournament is not the end goal. It's just uh, the beginning of the road to the world championship. To me, that's more meaningful than just finishing a good place. So I'm really risking everything and I'm here to win. I'm not here to settle. I'm Talion and I'm gonna prove this weekend that hard work really does pay off and I will win this tournament. Talion mentions that he, you know, sees esports as a means to meet new people, make new friends, be involved in what he called a lifestyle as, as much of a profession. And Sadiq, obviously, you are a player who has competed in a bunch of tournaments. You stream a lot. You're on a professional team. Do you agree that esports is kind of this method to, to meeting people and kind of making a new life for yourself? I mean, sure, it, it can be. <laughs> right. <laughs> but it, it has worked out for me in that particular fashion, so I feel lucky. Sure. And uh, obviously it's one of those things where, you know, we, we've seen over the course of this tournament, we've had players coming from different spots. Some people have, you know, parents who are supporting their, mm -hmm. their pursuit into esports. Some are, are more kind of like, hey, you know, this is a cool hobby. Like, this is a, a passion, but you should definitely focus on, you know, 
uh, school and, and furthering your, you know, your work prospects. So, uh, Cora, what, uh, you know, have you had any uh, backing from your family as far as, uh, you know, pursuing casting and, and playing Hearthstone? Oh yeah, my family's very supportive. I'm, I'm pretty lucky. My brother plays Hearthstone. My dad plays Hearthstone. So it's, it's sort of uh, something that we can do together. You know, at the end of every day, we, you know, turn on a movie, play some Hearthstone. It's, it's good for my family, and then. In return, they also support me in my endeavors. So I'm in school, I'm casting. It's it's hectic, but it's great that you know players like Talion are trying to essentially do it all and still become professional players along the way. Right, Talion does want to win this tournament, but he's going to have to start by evening the score against Chalky. Druid versus Druid. Savij, what do you see? Now, this is certainly going to be a big one. If Chalky was to go up 2-0 and zero here, he would uh, only have... Uh, Excuse me, was it this Shaman that was available as his yep. third deck? Mm -hmm. So he would only have his Shaman, shaman after that, and uh, that might be too much for Talion to handle three times in a row. So this is going to be extremely important, especially for Talion. Yeah, yeah, the Shaman is definitely a deck that, sort of like the Control Warrior, like the Zoo, can pick up a win pretty much anywhere. Um, it's very aggressive and very dependent on the opening hand, so one out of three times you're likely to get pretty lucky. So definitely Talion needs to pick up this win if he wants to give himself a more positive position in this match. Yep, both players here. I wouldn't expect much keeps. Maybe the Leaving Roots, maybe the Emperor from the other side, but uh, Inner Weight and Wild Growth are the cards that uh, these players want to see. Oh my and goodness. And Shaki has them both, as well Shockey. as that Emperor Tharsan. Yeah, that could be a turn three Emperor right there. Yeah, Italian's hand a lot less exciting in the early going. Does have that Shade and Axe Ramus, he can jump or bump down on turn three, but Force of Nature, Lothab, and Azure Drake aren't really going to become a factor unless he draws Innervate in the next couple turns. No, this is looking much better for Chucky as it is, but that Shade of Naxx Ramus, when he gets it out, if, if the Shade gets to grow multiple turns, it might help him uh, make a comeback. There's nothing even on the board yet, but just looking at the hands, it seems like uh, Talion is going to be in a big trouble. So I, I talked to a lot of pro players about the Druid Mirror, and nobody's excited to play. It's just, it's not something that feels particularly good to, to even have to do. But I will say that uh, a lot of the players have mentioned to me that when they see their opponent hero power on turn two, they're just inside, they're like, yes, got him. Yeah, <laughs> that's such a huge deal to turn two. Yeah, I mean, we joke that the player that, you know, gets wild growth in their opening hand or draws <laughs> it in the first couple of turns has more skill when it comes to the Druid matchup. But uh, in this case, it was just some really amazing luck for Chalky's side. He gets to innervate that Emperor, and then he's got such a great curve going ahead. And Talion has no answer to this Emperor right now. There is no Living Roots, no Swipe, no Wrath, not even a Keeper of the Grove. Still nothing. This Emperor nothing is going to get play. two turns of discounts on Chalky's incredible late game hand. And Talion has nothing to play. Hero oh. power is all he can do. Oh my goodness, Chalky, uh, very stoic face in these things, but he has to be celebrating on the inside. This is yeah. exactly, this is the dream. Like what? When you're playing <laughs> the Druid Mirror, right? You get uh, clean out the lore here, you get two additional cards, get the discounts on those. He could yeah. also just go for the Doctor Boom. I wouldn't blame him for, for either option. Let's see which of these things. Chalky's just an embarrassment of riches at this point. He's got so many options. <laughs> this swipe, Azure Drake combo, is, is going to cost five mana. I like this oh lore a lot. Getting those extra discounts on the on the freshly thrown cards and uh, not exposing your uh, your board to uh, to swings by uh, by big game hunter yep. is a is a smart plan. He's so, he's in a good spot. Yeah, not to mention picks up Force of Nature and Druid of the Claw, two incredible cards to get those discounts on. It's not a Wild Growth, it's not an Innervate, those uh, Living Roots cards that you don't want to see it on. It's still two very high quality later game cards. Meanwhile, having hit turn five, uh, Talion kind of joins the game in a way. A lot of his hand was, <laughs> was just predicated on getting a turn five. He had that Shade, and uh, the Shade is very good in the Druid Mirror. I do want to point that out. If you get that combo going, the Savage Na or Savage Roar, mm. Force of Nature later on, but it just doesn't look like Chalky's going to give him the time. And uh, <laughs> Again, you have so many options here, but no, I always feel like Dr. Boom <laughs> is just the correct play. This is just ridiculous. Chalky's, what's, what's going on in Chalky's head right now is that what would be the... If, if, what would be a possible combination, like a sequence of events that would lead to him losing this game. It's almost mm -hmm. impossible to even imagine. Yeah, at this point, he actually does have uh, the option to just play a little bit more defensively, because when was the last time you saw in a Druid Mirror one side getting three turns of Emperor Tharas on discounts on their hand? I mean, that's just incredible. One mana swipe. <laughs> <laughs> One mana swipe sitting in the hand. This Three is Three mana Azure Drake swipe. Next turn oh, he can force insane. of nature, Drake, and swipe. 
That's a pretty good Druid turn, and we saw Chalky there just put up the taunt, and he's just like, nah, I'm just gonna hit you in the face, and he can absolutely get away with it, because Talion is just forced into this desperate situation of having to trade everything to just get more things off the board, and that's just mind control tech, and finally the reign of Emperor Thorsen comes to a close. Hey Rob, do you know what's better than a 7 mana Dr. Boom? Uh, no. Because this 4 mana Dr. Boom's looking pretty nice. Doctor Four, Doctor Four. Is that? I thought that was Powdered Shredder. Yeah, I thought that was anymore. only if you were playing Secret Paladin. <laughs> uh, we are gonna see the Doctor Boom and the Azure Drake come out. Things we don't say often, uh, unless it involves an Innervate. Uh, Talion does drop his own Doctor Boom on turn seven, but yeah. can't there's imagine. There's nothing he can do. Yeah, there's really nothing he can do here, and that. That early Emperor Thorsen, three straight turns of Emperor Thorsen. Yeah, Talion right now choosing the deck that he's gonna play first against Chucky's Shaman. <laughs> just uh, just getting in the time now to to really think about it. But yeah, Chucky again, <laughs> it's funny because he's such an expressive individual. Uh, when I talk to him, he's always laughing, he's always smiling. But he, when he plays in these events, you know, he tries to to have like a calm, competitive face. And you know, it's one thing to do that when you're losing. It's you want to you never really want to show how much anguish you're in. But when you're winning this heavily. The ability to keep that poker face is, uh, is actually kind of impressive. Talion puts up the bear. Uh, Savits, what's that bear going to do? Uh, absolutely nothing, Rob. <laughs> nothing. <laughs> Chucky now is just uh, you know, choosing how he wants to end this. He's putting that Boombot in there. Brought the Boombot for one. Oh. Decides Sus not one. to BM at all. No. Uh, one mana swipe is, is kind of BM enough, if A we're being bit. honest. I don't, I don't think you have to add too much more to that. So Chucky going up 2-0 in this series. Uh, in this match, like, oh, let's just call it what it was. He had the better Druid starting hand. He got going. He put on the pressure. Uh, I would say the one thing, the one really important decision he had to make was whether or not to push the aggression or trade out minions. Yeah. But when he had that Ancient of Lore, he had that Thor's and he's just, nope, just gonna hit him in the face. That was like one most one-sided Druid mirror I've ever seen in my yeah. life. Chucky, Chucky just had everything. He had a wild card. He had to innervate. Emperor Taurus and more cards draw, while Talion going hero power turn two, going hero power turn four, leaving up the Emperor. Very slow start for Talion. Very unfortunate, especially going up against that hand from Chalky. And usually, you know, sometimes the Druid that has all that ramp in the hand runs into the issue of getting all the ramp, getting to those high mana very, very early, and then running out of cards. But with that Ancient of Lore, the Emperor Thars on Dr. Boom, Azure Drake reduced to two mana. I mean, Chalky just literally had it all. No, I'm pretty sure if you, you know, went into the supermarket and you were just kind of shopping for what cards you wanted for your during opening hand, you're like, yeah, I'm going to take this. I'm going to take, yeah, you know what? Throw in the Thor's hand too. I'm just going to have all this. And I I'm not sure you could have picked a better hand. So uh, for Chalky, one game away from staving off elimination. Uh, Italian, obviously in the opposite situation, but Chalky's an intense competitor. He mm -hmm. came here uh, with aspirations to win, believes he's the best person here. So we had a chance to talk to him about that and how he believes that these results that he gets in tournaments ultimately help solidify the fact that he is one of the game's top performers. Well, if you're winning and performing, you can't really be ignored in this game. I'm Keaton Gill, I go by Chalky, I'm 21 years old, and I'm from Indiana. When I was younger, I mean, my parents signed me up for like sports and all that, you know, just like a lot of other kids. I played those and it was it was fun, uh, the competition aspect, but it wasn't something I was, you know, completely destroying at. And so I went to my first card game tournament. It was just in my local town. My dad drove me there, it was like five minutes. And I won the entire thing. I think that really sparked something in me. I was like, you know, this is a lot more fun because I'm winning. Hearthstone has kind of exploded in a big way. Uh, I played in so many tournaments over the last two years, and I've never won one. Uh, I might have more second places than anyone else. Uh, I've gotten semifinals to finals, but the, the win has just eluded me. You know, and everyone mostly loses. You know, you go to an event, there's 16 people, 15 are going to be losers. I've basically been here before, uh, about two years ago, 2014. I was, you know, one of the last eight people, just like I am now, and I lost. And so to get another chance at this um, and maybe be able to get that win, it just means everything to me. Now, I've kind of been around for all of Hearthstone's history. And, you know, if I move on and I'm done with Hearthstone, I want to be able for me to look back, for other people to look back and be like, yeah, Chalky was one of the top players. And there's no argument you can make about it. Honestly, I just feel like, you know, I'm the best here and I'm going to prove it. Chalky claims he's not having a good time unless he's destroying somebody. And after that last match, uh, you know, Talion still has a chance. He still has breathing room, but it is 2-0. And 
Uh, Chalky really wants to win this series and advance to the top four and eventually make it to the Hearthstone World Championship and win even that because, as he said, if you get the results, people cannot ignore you. You are someone who cannot be ignored in the competitive scene. And, uh, you know, we joked around yesterday about the number two a lot, but <laughs> to even compete in, in as many tournaments as he has and, and get that far, that's super mm -hmm. impressive. Yeah, it sure is. Chuck is one of the one of the pros who has made it through the tough open field. It's really impressive to see him this far. And Chucky likes to destroy, and he certainly has been in this <laughs> in this match so far. Yeah, I mean, we joke about Chucky being afraid of the number two, but right now he's up two games to zero, so it can't be feeling too bad. He uh, loves destroying. Unfortunately, Talion down zero games to two. He just wants to come in here and prove that he can be a professional. He can make a name for himself. And uh, you know what? We might actually be able to see that in the coming games. Depends on how uh, he can respond to this aggro shaman. Right. We still want to know what you guys are thinking for this series. You're voting Chalky, you're voting Talion, hashtag HTT, and then hashtag either Chalky or Talion. Canadians out there, Talion needs your support. <laughs> Get out there and vote for Talion. Show him that you're supporting him in this event. Uh, everyone from Indiana probably already voted from Chalky, so we're probably good on this one. But uh, yeah, one game remaining for these, and it is going to be that Shaman. And we've talked about over the course of this event what an absolute powerhouse this deck is. It is it is a sort of deck where, uh, you know, we saw Nostum yesterday go tunnel trug, tunnel trug, totem golem, totem golem, and I believe it was like feral spirits, and it was just, ugh. Yeah, we saw some interesting card choices in Jockey's Shaman as well. There was that Haunted Creeper, for example. Cora, what do you think of Haunted Creeper in uh, you know, Agro Shaman? I really like it, especially in Chalky's build. He's running Knife Juggler, he's running Flame Tongue Totem, two cards that work very, very well with the Haunted Creeper's Death Rattle. So I think it's a great choice for him. Gives him just a little bit of difference in his deck from the standard Agro Shaman that might be able to catch an opponent by surprise. Right, yeah. and Talion's going to go ahead and queue up with this removal warrior, this hyper-intensive uh, removal warrior build that features uh, way less of the clunky late-game drops, more of those uh, cheap removal options that Warrior has a plethora of. So Chalky, looking at his opening hand, that Knife Juggler feels pretty good. Uh, maybe the Feral Spirit, Flame Tongue Totem. Korra, do you have any kind of insight into what you'd be looking to do here? Would you, would you go greedy, try to get the Tunnel Trog, or are you okay with something like this? I would definitely get rid of the Flame Tongue. I think the Knife Juggler Feral Spirit are okay. This is not a great matchup for Chalky. The Warrior is definitely favored. Double Bash, Double Slam, Fiery War Axe. Very easy for the Warrior to remove Chalky's early game. Chalky's best shot is if he can get that early aggression and then Talion just draws really poorly. No weapons in the opener. Yeah, and not even those, just those cards that you mentioned, but this particular Warrior was tweaked with the Death Lords. Mm -hmm. That is not a huge, op like a huge wall that the Shaman has to get through. Silencing it with, a, with an Earthshock is, is not that strong still. Right, so we see that Leper Gnome come out. That's a great, spot, or great start for the Aggro Shaman. Doomsayer in hand as well. I don't remember if Talion had that Harrison Jones uh, off the top of my head, but that could obviously, that's a huge factor when you're playing against Aggro Shaman, the ability to shut down that Doom Hammer because the Shaman invests so much for it on turn five and it does represent so much damage. Chalky's turn two play of Crackle, not super satisfying. Uh, it does draw that Argent Horse Rider though, so he will have something for three. The Crackle would have done nothing at all. Six damage. It would have done it's six uh, damage. At this point, he'll get the Maybe. six damage later on, but for now it would have right. just been on the overload, so like no reason to rush it here. Really unfortunate, Chucky not happy about hero powering. Even the Knife Chuckler would have felt good to have in this situation. Yeah, Talion's sort of sitting on another embarrassment of riches, much like Chalky's Druid Hand last game. He's got the Bash. Revenge works really well on those low health minions. Death's Bite going to be great, and then just a card True Heart to top it off. That's what's really going to make it almost impossible for the Aggro Shaman to kill this Hyper Removal Warrior in the late game. Oh. Three from the Craggle onto that Death Lord. Chalky not having great RNG today. Two on Implosions, and now three on that Craggle. Yeah, that really feels bad. If you if you get a three in that spot, if he got the six, he could have traded the Leper Gnome for the Death Lord. The Death Lord would have been out of the way, and he would have gained the minion, which potentially could have been uh, something uh, that's not just a two one. So let's talk a second about Death Lord and why this card is so powerful against these raw aggression decks. Because uh, you know if you're playing against mid range druid, sometimes it go really poor for you. You can get like a Thoris hand can come out, some other big creature. Uh, when you're playing against aggro shaman. Realistically, everything you pull, unless it's the Dr. Boom that's sitting in Chalky's hand, is no. going to be like, what, three mana or lower? So there's really mm -hmm. not a whole lot of downside to it. I think we're just going to see the Lava Burst. He has to get rid of that Le Death Lord. Archon's Horse Rider, Knife Juggler, both of those seem kind of bad. They don't do anything. 
Yeah, it's very weak if you play either of the minions, but if you Lava Burst this Death Lord, that means Overload. you can't play Doomhammer yeah, next turn. That's such a huge problem, too. You really don't want the Overload just yet, but I think he might be forced to just Lava Bursting anyway and uh, delaying the Doomhammer. But the problem with that is, though, that if he delays the Doomhammer for turn 6, then the Doomhammer on turn 6 is going to delay the Dr. Boom. <laughs> on turn 7. Yeah. And the best that Chaki can really hope for from this Death Lord would be that 3-4 Totem Golem, and Talion has the perfect response right in hand, 4 mana, with that Dust Bite. Yeah. You're really going to need something big off this Lava Burst. And, <laughs> oh, and that's no. unfortunately not it. Might even be the worst thing he could have gotten out of that. Even a Flame Tongue Totem, which doesn't do anything on its mm -hmm. own, would have been kind of useful because of the Charger minion in his hand. Well, I do want to point out, if something bigger had come out, the odds of it having more than four health are fairly slim, given what we know about the deck. Yeah, that's true. So the Death Spite would have come out and cleared it. Now for Talion, it's one of those things where the play is less clear. It looks like he's just, wow, he's going to Armor Smith or Revenge. So uh, not. I'm not saying this was a good situation for Chalky, but at least the Death Spite doesn't come out right now. Maybe that's something. Yeah. I'm a little bit surprised that he went for the Armor the Smith revenge. before the Revenge, because it's like I, I would rather keep my Armor Smith at four HP than gain that one extra armor. But it's a, it's pretty minor. Yeah, especially with Justicar in hand, you're not too worried about dying. Yeah. You're at 30 health right now. That extra one armor doesn't seem like it's too worth it. But then again, it's a little bit more difficult for the Shaman to deal three damage to a minion on board. They've got a lot of spells that can do it very easily, but, um, you know, Arjun Horse Rider, only two health. Feral Spirits, only two health. So it's it's not the worst, but definitely a little bit questionable. Yeah, Talion actually has Sylvanas Windrunner in this deck, and that's kind of something you used to see more commonly in control decks uh, for Control Warrior. Uh, largely cycled out of the kind of modern standing Control Warrior, the, the sort of decks that VLPS is building. Uh, and it's even stranger to me in this uh, hyper removal oriented deck because that deck largely abandons all of its kind of bomb cards and, and big uh, clunky legendaries in favor of just having more straight removal. So interesting from Talion. Why do you think you put in the Sylvanas? Is it to, to hedge your bets against control matchups? I'm not exactly sure. It's definitely, uh, um, I think it's included with, with a particular matchup or two in mind that he, he has been struggling with. Because it's not a, it's not, not, not a typical card in this in this removal deck. But uh, it's a great inclusion for their control matchups, that's for sure. Yeah, it's definitely an interesting tech choice. Uh, not going to be too helpful in this game, especially since Chalky will not be focusing on clearing board too much. We did see him running uh, both Doomhammer charges into that Armor Smith. That's probably the most high priority minion for the Warrior to have against the Shaman in this game. So much potential um, knowing that the Warrior runs to Revenge. You don't want them to get more armor than they already are going to be getting. Oh yeah. The Cavalry is here. First Horse Rider comes out. Next turn likely to be the Doctor Boom. In this situation, now that the Armor Smith has been dealt with, he's just gonna go face. Ignore the Chastigar. Right, and this is... Oh, oh wow. Oh, Harrison Jones, that is... That is that a good straw? I can't tell. Not, <laughs> you know, Sabitz, I'm, I'm not the greatest player, but I think that's a pretty good draw right there. Before Chucky gets to use the Rock Biter weapon on that Doom Hammer, that's oh, so, so, so good for Talion. Even yeah. the slam is so nice here. You can just slam the, off that uh, off that shield from the Archon Horse Rider. However, it is quite tempting to just keep using that hero power now that it has been upgraded. Yeah, I, w I wouldn't be surprised. There's a point where this game even gets away from the aggro shaman with as much damage as they can do. Now that the Doomhammer has been destroyed, most copies of, or most versions of this deck are running two copies of Doomhammer. Don't know if Chalky is. But it's kind of one of those things where the warrior just reaches a threshold where you're never going to do enough damage. Yeah. Yeah, the warrior is getting four health every turn. We see shield block in hand, revenge, brawl, shield slam, more weapon removal. It's just going to be so difficult, if not impossible, for Chalky to come back from this. Yeah, I, I don't know. Even Boombots for four to face it. This is like <laughs> not quite there yet. Um, I wonder. Yeah, I don't know. I'm trying to imagine a, imagine a draw or Chalky... situation for Chalky, but. It looks like it. even the board is so strong for Talion right now, and he has all the answers in the world. He has the upgraded hero power. There's the shield block in case something like second Doomhammer double rock biter happened to burst him for a lot of damage. Um, yeah. Yeah, and if you're Chalky, Chalky is someone who likes to, to do a lot of math and kind of figure out exactly what his damage threshold is. You see eight cards in the hand of Talion. Uh, uh, Chucky is not gonna give up. He's gonna he's gonna try his best. Goes for the double horse rider. That is eight damage to face, and he does get a decent board. But that death rattle from the from the death spot is going to be so efficient in dealing with those divine shields. 
Yeah, that's great. Uh, Talion going to be able to clear off the Totem Golem, get rid of those Divine Shields. Even has second Revenge in hand, can just go ahead and kill off the Horse Riders. Uh, Chalky not left with any charge minions in his deck as far as we know. The horse riders are usually about it. Some shamans run an arcane golem. I have yet to see Leroy Jenkins, but I mean, you know, we could be surprised. Why not? <laughs> Why not? Um, Grom coming into Talion's hand, that's actually quite a bit of damage. 1425 for Talion. Right, and right yeah. now it just looks like he's uh, going to try to generate some more armor here. Uh, I don't necessarily think he really needs to draw into anything, right? Like, what are you even looking to draw into here? It looks like his hand is just stacked with options, but, you know, get some, generate some more armor, just keep pushing himself out of range. And he doesn't know if Chalky has something like a Rock Biter so, or a second Doom Hammer, so he has to be very careful. I think we're going to see the revenge to get rid of those Horse Riders. The Death Rattle from the Death Spite is going to deal with the Divine Shields. With this play, he gets a full clear and is a able to tank up once again, so... Right very powerful now, turn. Now knocking right on Chalky's door. Chalky's at 16 health, has Grom in hand, has the slam for turn 10 if he wants to combine those things. Obviously, probably not looking to shield. Well, no, it's actually just going to be a Chalky is going to go ahead and throw up the concede. Realize there's no way he's going to be able to muster any kind of offense to deal with Italian. And Italian's going to go ahead and get on the board in this series, go to one game, and uh, great feeling for Italian to be able to get this win. Yeah. It's one of those things where, you know, Italian, having talked to him a little bit over the weekend, he is a somewhat emotional player, and, and he's kind of prone to, you know, oh, I lost a game, this feels really bad, like, can I even do this? So getting that win feels really good for him. Yeah, I mean, that warrior deck from Talion was, was clearly well equipped to deal with the aggro shaman, but uh, also flawlessly played from Talion. I really like the way that he played it defensively, getting those tank ups, getting those armor ups. Very convincing win. Yeah, it was a very smart use of the hero power there. Revenge is coming very, very in handy. I just really love this warrior list that we're seeing several people play today. I think we were surprised by the amount of control warrior, but it doesn't seem like the players were. I think they read the meta very correctly and actually right. knew what they were going to be coming up against. So a very nice win for Talion, but at the same time, also a deck that he was very favored with. So not, not unexpected. No, not at all. It's only going to get harder for Talion from here. He still needs to find a win with his Druid and Warlock, and those are certainly not as good matchups as the Warrior was. Right, well, we're going to go ahead and get to know a little bit more about Talion, who kind of comes in here with maybe less of a well-known story. You know, we know he's, uh, he's from Canada. Talion is uh, actually studying uh, <laughs> actuarial science at university. Uh, wants to get more into esports, as he kind of mentioned earlier, make that a lifestyle. Uh, Savit, you want to tell us a little more about him? Yeah, I mean, during the winter pre preliminaries, he <laughs> He was devastated by, by a loss to Chucky. Well, here he has another chance. He's playing against Chucky again. And uh, if he manages to win two games in a row, I don't think he's going to be too sad about the loss that he had in the past. Right. Italian uh, believes that one of his bigger strengths is that as a player, you know, he's not afraid to make those, uh, those riskier calls, mm -hmm. those kind of situations. And that's a, that's a really uh, powerful caveat to, to have as a player. You know, we've seen that in players like Firebat, who is obviously, you know, 2014 world champion, is always a player who's willing to just go down and make those really risky plays that he believes gives him the best chance to win. We saw that from Amnesiac earlier when, you know, he was really behind in that rogue match willing to just make this giant dagger play into something like weapon removal. But that's really a sign of great players is, is not always just playing defensively, but, but playing to win. Yeah. And uh, Cora, what do you think? Would you pick the Druid or the Warlock first against the Shaman from Chucky? Against the Shaman, I feel like both, both the Druid and the Warlock probably have a similar chance to win if the Warlock is Zoo. If the Warlock is Reno Lock, definitely go with the Warlock, uh, much more likely. But yeah, the Druid, it's it's unfavored, but it has a decent shot. I'd say maybe it's a 60-40 for the Shaman, but the Druid can do some incredible things with Ramp. Ancient of Lore is actually very useful for healing in this matchup, so I think Talion went with what is most likely the better chance here. Yeah, I mean, in the end, he ha he does have to win with both of his decks, so it, it's in that sense, it doesn't matter. But if he, if he thought that one of the decks is much better than the other one, it could be beneficial to start with that one and... Uh, or, and uh, try to get more information out of Chucky's decks, just in case that there is uh, some kind of surprise waiting. Right, just a reminder, if Chucky does take this series, uh, he will not necessarily be guaranteed in the top four. This is just to save off elimination. Mm -hmm. He will have to play another match tomorrow to decide whether or not he makes it to this top four. So both of these players backs against the wall. They lost that first series. They're coming in here looking to not only get uh, a victory, but maybe a little, little restoration of confidence after going down early on in this uh, America's Winter Championship. Chalky has that Haunted Creeper. Uh, gotta think that's a strong keep, right? It's something that's sticky, stays on the board, represents some sort of threat, but probably not want to keep the... Oh, wow, he actually got rid Decided of it. Decided to put it back. Yep. 
Why? Okay, Cora, walk me through that. Why do you get rid of that Haunted Creeper? It's a good card. It's definitely strong to have, but especially in a matchup that isn't as heavily favored in the Shaman side as you would like it to be, you're definitely hard mulliganing for those more powerful early drops. You want the Tunnel Trog, you want the Totem Golem. So in this case, Haunted Creeper was good, but just not quite good enough. Instead, he took that that risk to mulligan for something that was even better. Yeah, a little bit rough there for Chucky. He was hoping to find find the, the Hunter Hero Power, or maybe potentially the Druid one, but Bioblast, not too bad. Dagger Master, a little bit awkward uh, because you might because if you play a Doom Hammer, you won't be able to get any use out of it at all. Lesser heal doesn't complement the strategy very well. He is going to go for the dagger. That's interesting. Generally, the Finley you want to pull that shapeshift is great. Uh, works really well with Doom Hammer. Fire Blast is okay. Steady Shot is is generally the best one because it gives you that two damage very easily. But even Life Tap can be really strong. Oh yeah, Life Tap as well. One one of the better ones. Trying to like he, that allows to draw some extra cards, for those burn cards when you really need it to end the game. Goes for the goes for the Rogue Power, which is a little bit surprising to me. I was expecting to see, maybe see the Fire Blast mm -hmm. over it, but. It is more mana efficient for damage, and there is no Doom Hammer in his hand just yet. I wouldn't be surprised if, if what you brought up, the mana efficiency for damage, is something that uh, Chalky ultimately decided to, to allow to make that decision. Because, as we've mentioned throughout the series, he is a player who is generally uh, makes his decisions based on what is the most efficient play, what uh, generates the most damage over time. So, wouldn't be surprised. I also expected the Fire Blast for what it's worth. So, uh, not super uh, great hero power selections in this. Finley Murgleton is a great card in this uh, deck, though, because the Shaman Hero power doesn't often lend itself to a win condition where you're being hyper-aggressive. You don't have control over what totems are summoned for the most part, so uh, I do like Finley Murgleton in this, and it's a very common inclusion. Yeah, it really fills the gap with the, or, or the pro problem that the Shaman has with the Hero power to complement the strategy. The only one that usually helps is... Uh it helps all that much is the, is the, like the spell power one to, to boost your spells to get a little bit of extra damage. Sometimes stone can protect your aggressive uh, early minions pr from uh, from weapons and such, but still, a lot of the other classes have have better hero powers for their base strategies, so to say. Yeah, it's very rare that you get, you know, worry, armor, heal, and dagger, which are the three that can be argued maybe they're worse than the totem hero power. But in this case, the dagger is actually very efficient for damage if he wants to go ahead and hero power, say, next turn with the knife juggler. That's two damage for the one mana. Not as good as the steady shot still, but he's making the best out of a pretty bad situation. Talion, however, has a really great hand. He's got that shredder, innervate, wrath. Um, even the Force of Nature going to be really nice to clear off some of Chalky's minions. And Chalky's hand is <laughs> is just not what he wants to see right now. That double Rockbiter weapon has so much potential if he can pick up the Doom Hammer, but Knife Juggler with no other minions in hand is not what he wants to be seeing right now. Yeah, it's a little bit early for those rock fighters. They don't really do that much. He could use one to pop the front half of the Shredder in case that he, he wants to protect the Juggler, but I wouldn't be too surprised if he just played like Juggler and went face with everything. Right. Yeah. Looking at the hand, obviously he does have nine points of damage represented from those two rock biters from the lightning bolt, but a uh, little early to be looking to close out the game. So, kind of curious what you all think of the knife juggler hero power. And I, it's not necessarily using knife juggler in its most efficient use, although it's kind of an odd card to have in the current aggro shaman anyway. But it is just the most potential damage you can put out. Yeah, I think Chucky definitely had an option to even lightning bolt that piloted shredder. It's not great, especially if you top deck doom hammer, but. Chances of top decking the Doom Hammer are, you know, two out of you know however many cards are left in the deck, so it's not super likely. Rockbiter would have been better there just because it can clear off that Shredder. You don't have any overload, and then even with the Argent Horse Rider, possibly could have cleared off uh, the two drop that comes out of the Shredder. But in this case, Chalky just decides to go face, get that hero power up, and get more damage in the long run. Yeah, I completely agree with this line of play. When the deck gives you oranges, then you make orange juice. He only has three three cards in his hand right now, which which are all direct damage spells. Those those cards will not help him sustain in a long game, but what they do is that they potentially could allow him to end the game quickly. Uh, Savits, just a quick question for me. Do they have orange juice in Finland? Yes. Okay, well, I learned uh, something new about Finland. You usually Actually, hear the, uh, the phrases make lemon or make lemonade oh. out of lemons like when life gives you lemons you make lemonade so but oranges oranges this are good too still kind vitamin of vitamin c right? is very i was gonna helpful. say maybe it's just a finnish colloquialism we've learned <laughs> a lot about finland today on the stream <laughs> oh uh, my goodness yeah going back to the board here uh Chucky draws the tunnel trog would have rather had that earlier uh, but he can get some value with it in the lightning bolt 
Looks like he's actually going to start playing the training game. Maybe realizes that, you know, he's a little bit behind, has to get some damage uh, off the board. Figures that uh, with this play, it's likely that the horse rider might leave an additional turn and uh, he's going to get an additional two damage in that way. Right, there's a Druid of the Cloth atop, another great minion for dealing with Aggro Shaman. Really only countered by Earthshock, and it's yet to be seen if Chalky's even running that. It might be a card that he felt he could cut as he started putting in you know, Knife Jugglers, Haunted Creepers. Talion, with both combo pieces in hand, as well as Innervate, might even be thinking, you know, is it time for me to start pushing damage to the face? It's not a bad play. If he charged out that, it would put no. Chalky at 20, and the next turn you just Innervate combo, and you do have a Shredder on the board, which is pretty sticky, and there isn't a convenient way to get rid of the... Oh, what wow. a man! Really, really good for Talion. Yeah. I just want to point out, Chalky has just had some miserable luck with a lot of the things that are that are less up to his personal choice. We've seen the implosions, uh, you know, just not working out for him. Talion, on the other hand, getting some pretty solid uh, solid draws here and some solid results from the piloted Shredder. Yeah, it's an extremely interesting line of play. If he, if he did choose to go base there for that 8 damage, push, putting Chucky down to 20, in that case, even if one of the four attack minions would have survived, oh, there's the Doomhammer. But that Annoyatron is such a huge roadblock as it is. That Annoyatron is very annoying. <laughs> yes. No, and in there this case, go. it's not even so much the Annoyatron as it is that Druid of the Claw that Talion decided to put in bear form. I was thinking, you know, if, if he wants to combo, he can go ahead and charge that at face, put Chalky at 24, but decides to play very defensively. And in this case, it really paid off for Talion with that Doomhammer top deck from Chalky. Doomhammer plus Double Rockbiter has the potential to do, oh gosh, is it is it 16 damage in 16, one turn? That's yeah. incredible for Chalky, but unfortunately, those two taunts just completely shutting down his options. As some aggro players say, taunting is cheating, and Talion with that Annoyatron and Druid of the Claw has a lot of cheats going on. Gets the Druid of the Claw down to 4 HP, and the Annoyatron has now been taken care of. So uh, if Jackie was to get uh, some kind of good soap deck, maybe Angestal uh, Knowledge mm -hmm. in, into uh, Earth Shock and uh, Lightning Bolt or, or so, uh, that could end the game. I do want to point out that despite the health totals, Italian does have Dr. Boom, he has the combo, he has that Innervate, so this could very quickly turn against Chaki. And uh, as you said, he really needs to, on this next turn, get into an Ancestral Knowledge. Uh, even a Lava Burst, I believe, because of Overload, he wouldn't be able to use alongside with the Rock Biters. And, and still one damage off even with that. Yeah, Chucky has a lot of potential for a two-turn lethal with many of his draws, but Talion is just one turn ahead with that Dr. Boom leading into combo. Well, let's see what he finds. Oh, oh, haunted, haunted Creeper. Creeper. You know, Haunted Creeper for a long time was a staple in a lot of the aggro decks for like Face Hunter as well. But it's one of those things where when you draw it and you need damage, it just feels so bad. You just never want to get it off the top of your deck past turn two. Yeah. In his uh, video, Jackie said that uh, or that it's impossible for him to lose, but looking at this board state right now, in this game 4, it, seem, it seems impossible for him to win because of that combo in Dalian's hand already. Yeah, this is uh, going to be pretty bad for him. He's going to play down that Haunted Creeper, but uh, we know it's on the other side here. Yeah, this is a little bit frustrating for Jackie because from his point of view, his chances to survive are, are not that bad because the combo does cost 9 mana, but uh, there's the inner weight and... Uh, yeah, very that. unfortunate for Chucky right here, especially since this, um, this is a matchup that is slightly favored to the aggro shaman. The battalion's hand was very nice, had a lot of ramp, really good uh, curving out, and then that innervate combo one turn early, catching Chucky just a bit off guard. But you wouldn't know it looking from his face. He, he still looks very stoic, um, not really giving away any frustration. All right, so Italian goes ahead, ties up the series two to two. We are going to get into a game five very shortly, but you know, Talion, we talked about the going down 0-2, and it's something we've spoken about at length in the past, but going down 0-2 feels really bad. It's just all there is to it. It makes you question whether or not you can do that. For some people who take it even worse, it's kind of, do I even belong here? So Talion has managed to climb over this hurdle. He's tied up to series 2-2. Just needs to win one more game as the Warlock, and I believe you said it's Zoo, but if memory serves, I think it might actually be a yeah. Handlock variant, so... Uh, depending on what, <laughs> that's the thing when we talk about Warlock, so many options mm -hmm. that depending on what kind of hand lock or Reno lock it is, uh, could vastly shape his chances against the Sacro Shaman. I believe it might have been the Demon hand lock variant yeah. with, uh, with the Malganis and those Void Callers. So that's actually not that bad of a deck, um, deck to have against that. Because uh, in case that you do pull out one of the, one of the big demons right. on an early turn, taunt it up, it's hard for the Shaman player to get through.
but it also has the potential for the Demon Handlock player to have a very slow start. If you get the Twilight Drake, some of those giants, Void Caller's really nice, but uh, on turn four against a Shaman, it's not really what you want to see. So the MVPs of this matchup are definitely going to be Molten Giant, Anti Killbot, and those Defender of Argus's and Sun Fury Protectors. Right in for Chalky. It's, it's time for those Tunnel Trogs who's come out on turn one. Time for the Totem Golem follow up. Uh, he needs all of the elements to guide him to a successful game five if he wants to stay in this tournament. Talion obviously hoping for just the opposite, as you said, Cora, looking for those defenders of Argus's, looking for those heal bots. So uh, let's see what we have here. And yeah, we see the Mortal Coil, Twilight Drake, and Antique Heal Bot. Uh, definitely tells us this is not Zoo. Mm -hmm. So Yep, it is the hand look. And Chalky might keep the Knife Jugger this time around. Personally, uh, when I, I, I like the, I like to play a lot of these type of Warlock decks. Not necessarily exactly what Talion is playing, but this style of strategies. And uh, what I'm most worried about is the early Knife Juggler. Either coin out Juggler or just turn to Juggler when, when I don't have the Dark Bomb. It's like the Knife Juggler is going to add up to so much damage so fast. Yeah, well, Talion has a lot of opportunity to shut down this Aggro Shaman very quickly with the Molten Giants, with the Taunt Minions and the Heal Bot. He's also going to be tapping the first few turns, which is giving Chalky an, an opportunity to just burst him down so quickly. Talion is doing damage to himself, and if Chalky can pick up uh, something like that Sir Finley Murgleton, get something like Steady Shot, he's just going to be adding on to that damage so quickly. Yeah, and we see Doomhammer in the hand as well. I was going to say, do you even consider keeping that, yeah. given how important it is? And he does, and he has a pretty solid opening hand, has a lot of options. Uh, curious to see if that Night Juggler comes out or if he coins out the... Or if he coins out the Night Juggle or just plays down the Leper Gnome. I like the Doomhammer keep in this particular instance because he, he already had a turn one. He already had a turn two. In case that he did not have a Leper Gnome and a Knife Juggler in his hand, I think I would have preferred uh, for Chucky to throw it away because it is so important to curve out nicely. But with the early curve already secured, Doomhammer is maybe the most powerful card in the entire deck, so why not keep it? Yeah, I definitely agree. You have such a, lo uh, a large amount of low mana minions and spells in the aggro shaman deck, so you're going to go ahead and just keep that doom hammer. It is going to be the win condition in this case, and then you're very likely to draw into those minions and spells that you can play on curve leading up to the doom hammer. We see that mortal coil come out, going to make short work of the leper gnome. And Chalky, if he decides not to coin anything out here, uh, he's going to have a really nice path into this doom hammer really quickly and. Uh, able to deliver a lot of burst damage if you can find that rock biter weapon. Personally, I've found uh, like uh, the line of play here is just play the Sun Fury against the minion to be slightly more successful in most cases. But it was his only taunt giver, so it's uh, not necessarily bad to just coil it there. This is an awkward turn for Tally, and he's snapping oh, and helps. picking up that zombie chow. Actually, really nice for him. Um, still not too great. The totem golem can take it out pretty easily. Now Chalky on two mana. Yeah, two mana. Um, the juggler seems kind of nice. He could uh, kill off the zombie child with the totem golem to protect the juggler, but then there's the potential hellfire. Mm -hmm. We do see that in uh, Talion's hand. Also, the Twilight Drake and Void Caller, really strong turn four plays. Void Caller, not so much here because he doesn't have any of those demons in hand. Uh, but we do see the Defender of Argus and the Antique Healbot, as well as the Sun Fury Protector, setting up for some potentially very strong turns coming up for Talion. Oh, that might change things. It looked like a an, like an fairly obvious Hellfire there, getting that two for one, clearing those uh, those three attack minions as fast as you can. But how do you not play the Void Caller with that Mulliganus in the hand? That Mulliganus is amazing. If Chalky can't come up with an Earth Shock, he's, he does have damage in hand. He's got the Lava Burst. But having to spend so much mana, having to be overloaded for the next turn, and use those valuable burst spells on removing a Mulliganus that came out for free feels so bad for the Shaman. Yeah, and it really looks likely in this situation that it, it will, in fact, come out. Unless Chalky is going to go for some kind of strategy where he kills the Void Wall. Walker and the Malkan is here, but I don't think so. Because even though, if you look at this here, like, okay, the Void Caller is at 4 HP, and the, and the minions from Chucky only deal 3. But Talion does have the option to Hellfire first, and, well, actually, no. No, he, he has to trade first and then Hellfire mm -hmm. if, yeah. he wants, if he wants to get it out. Oh, but that's a problem, because now there's a chance that when the Void Caller dies, he gets the Jaraxxus instead. And, yeah, I mean, that's not bad to have, but it doesn't make your hero immune to damage. If the Jaraxxus comes out, Chalky is in such a much better position than if the Malganus comes out. Chalky can just ignore that Lord Jaraxxus, three attack, not doing anything. Um, the next turn, Talion can taunt it up, but for Chalky, that gives him a really great opportunity to deal some more damage to face and then use his burst spells finally after the Lord Jaraxxus has been taunted up. 
Absolutely. And uh, Talion here going for a Defender of Argus, killing one minion off. <laughs> this is a huge moment, I have to say. Like, depending on what pops out of that Shredder, that Shredder, my, my apologies, <laughs> I mean the voice color. Hi. Depending which one it brings to the board. You want to point out too, in the turn Talion played down that Void Caller, you know, he, there are a lot of other four options when you're dealing with Handlock. Uh, once you see that Void Caller, you pretty much know what it is. And it's the Lord Jurax is coming out of Talion's hand. That 50-50 wow. such a huge deal for Chucky right here. Chucky and Push in so much more damage right now. With maybe, like, maximum damage, I think, uh, keeping the Lava Burst would be something like Flame Tongue Totem into Abusive Search and get a 7, and an additional attack from the from the Doom Hammer, so there's 9 damage that the 7 of would have otherwise had to go into the Malganis. Right, and the Demon Handlock at the point where it wants to do multiple things, basically can only do one thing per turn. If he heal bots next turn, he's not taunting up Jiraxis. If he taunts up Jiraxis, he's not healing his health, so uh, that was way better than Malganis coming down, and something uh, something going a little bit right for Chucky there as, yeah. as these things go. This is not an easy turn for Chucky. He has to be a little bit scared of, um, of Molten Giants too, but with this strategy, I mean, there's no way you can afford to play around Moltens, right? Yeah, no, not at all. This is not a deck where you're able to play around the Molten Giants. You just need to go for it. And Chalky, with five damage coming directly from that Lava Burst, he needs to pick up four more if Talion chooses not to heal this turn and instead taunt up Lord Jaraxxus and Defender of Argus. Uh, definitely not life tapping, though. I think we can uh, agree no, on that not much. do that. That's not coming out, even if, uh, even if you do play down the, the Twilight Drake. Yeah, the Twilight Drake in the Sun Fury Protector seems fairly obvious there, because if he was to play the heal, but there would be seven damage guaranteed going to his face with the Rock Fighter potentially being either lethal or at least close to it. Oh, uh, tunnel Drog. Tunnel Drog, not what Chucky was looking for at all. Oh no, this, suddenly this is not looking so good for Chucky because Talion will survive this turn and then have the opportunity to play the Antique Heal, but to, to heal back up. No, that was really Chalky's one chance to draw a Crackle or a Lightning Bolt and roll spell damage to be able to close out this game before Talion has the opportunity to respond with that antique heal bot. Now the Lord Jaraxxus that Chalky was so lucky to see come onto the board is a huge problem, and, and it's looking less and less likely that Chalky is going to actually be able to shut out this game. Yeah, since Talion was able to survive this turn, that Jaraxxus is kind of working out be potentially better than the Malkanis would have. But uh, there was that dangerous moment, which was exactly this turn, in case Chucky p did pick up that uh, the spell that you mentioned, one of those spells. Looking at putting down that Flame Tongue Totem, at least starting to clear stuff off the board, get through these walls, and he, he's got to make them go away so that he can use th something like Rock Rider to finish off the game in the next couple turns. Obviously doesn't know that NT Killbot is in the hands for Talion. <laughs> Doing it the hard way, just going to sink that 15 damage into the Taraxus. He's not happy about it, but it's something that he feels like he has to do. That Hillbot looking like a pretty good play. <laughs> uh, not even, not even sure. You're, yeah, your health is going to go up a fair bit, but I, I don't think you tap here. Absolutely not. No. There's the Malganis coming up, so if he makes it to turn nine, uh, just looking at the hand, I, I don't think Talia needs much more than what he already has. No, he has to, removal. He has that. that that health gain, Malganis, which is. Just completely going to shut out Chalky coming up. Ooh, and he, he decides to tap. To tap. Yeah, I mean, it might be okay. See how it works out if he brings any sort of problems here. Okay, so Talion going to heal for eight, bring himself up to 15. Is there any way that Chalky, with a series of draws, can come back from this point? He's going to be able to get through the Lord Jaraxxus, uh, albeit not too easily. <sighs> Feral Spirits. It's just uh, completely going to get shut down by that Hellfire in Talion's hand. There might have been some sequence of draws, but that Federal Spirits is not part of that sequence. We haven't even seen an Ancestral Knowledge come we from Chucky's not. deck. Do we even know if he's Maybe he has running it. it? He's running some uh, some some cards that we usually don't want to see. Wanna, wanna see uh, excuse <laughs> me. That we <laughs> usually don't see. Yeah, For example, with that, uh... the, the Dr. Boom. Even the Dr. Boom is something that's not always there, but Jockey going to face tank six damage. And oh, wow. It's counting it up if it's lethal yet, but not quite, because the Hellfire would kill both of uh, both of Talion's minions. Taraxxus's death rattle cry is, is aggressive and uh, is actually not <laughs> showing Talion's pain right here, but Jockey's a little bit so close to being able to close out this game and top decking that Tunnel Trog. I think that was the second game in a row that he actually top decked Tunnel Trog late in the game when he needed yeah. some sort of burst spell or card draw to be able to shut out the game.
But that's kind of the weakness of the playing these type of decks. Like if you play one drops, I mean, you might not get them on turn one. Sometimes you draw them later. So aggro decks in general tend to be not the most consistent ones, with the exception of, Shoe, of the Zoo Warlock, where mm -hmm. uh, there's just so many early and well, mostly early plays. Oh, Feral Spirits. Well, that's going to keep him alive for another turn at least. So better than nothing. All right, it's yeah. not a bad draw, but it's not what he's looking for here. And you know, we talked about that ancestral knowledge, and I'm really of the mind that that must be what he cut along with that earth shot mm -hmm. to make room for the additional draws or the additional minions. And uh, not looking like a, a great decision here, but you know, it's something he said he tested extensively this deck specifically. So he had the numbers to back up bringing it in the, its current incarnation. Italian has that Melganus, but also could have just gone with Lothab and Dark Bomb, killing off that second Feral Spirit. Really, either play just oh. shutting down whatever Chalky's able to do. And that Haunted Creeper, again, coming into the hand in the late game and just taunting Chalky. I mean, if that had been an Earthshock or, you know, an Ancestral Knowledge, it would have been so much more effective here. It certainly would have. And just the Knowledge, not a strong turn too, but in that top decking situation, and that's going to be it, I believe, yeah. with the Doom card and the Dark Bomb. Talion is going to get his revenge. Talion completing the reverse sweep, going down 0-2 in the early game and managing to fight his way back into this match and keeping himself alive in this tournament. Chalky, unfortunately, going to drop the match and be knocked out of the tournament. Yeah, congratulations, Italian. though. As you said, completes that reverse sweep. He's going to take it 3-2. Uh, gets a hearty handshake there from Chalky. You know, no... No ill intent. Chalky respects Talion as a player, and you know, Talion wanted to come in here and prove that he was one of the best, and uh, again, beating someone of Chalky's caliber is certainly a, a great way to do it. Uh, great, great to see that coming out from Talion. It was one of those things where you down 0-2, didn't necessarily know if it was going to come out. Savage, what do you think of the series? I think Talion played really, really well. So did Chalky, but mm -hmm. uh, I'm kind of, I find myself quite often like rooting for the slower control type of decks, and uh, I think that the, the Control Warrior especially, it was such a great Great deck to have against Chucky's lineup. The handlock also worked out very well. Congratulations to Talion, and uh, excited to see him play more. Yeah, Cor, any thoughts on the series? It was very well played by both by both players. And you know, that aggro shaman, like we said, it can pull out a win in any case, but also very dependent on those first draws. If you end up drawing the Haunted Creeper, Tunnel Trog later on in the game, it's just, it's just so hard to end up closing out those matches, and Chucky was so close so many times, but unfortunately couldn't quite close out those games. And ultimately, Talion is going to take that series. All right, well, we have Dan standing by with the man of the hour, Dalian. Dan, how you doing? All right, so Talion, uh, you survive elimination, but you have to go up against Chucky, who has some of the most tournament experience. Did that play a factor at all? Do you feel like it was a specifically tough opponent for you? Yeah, absolutely, because... Uh... For me personally, I came in with a note saying uh, I'm just not going to have decks that was going to be Chalky, and it really sucked that I had to play Chalky for my tournament life. Yeah, and it seemed like you know it would be a direct clash of styles. You're playing more defensive, controly type decks, and he's playing super aggro. But going into it, you were down 0-2. What, do like, what were you thinking at that moment to help you turn it around to take the reverse sweep? I mean, as long as there's a chance, uh, you got to go for it, right? Um, when it was 0-2, I... Um, I wasn't like, all right, it's time to head home. I didn't have negative thoughts. I just want to play, play my best and go from there. <clears throat> Sorry. Yeah. yeah, of course. No worries. Uh, clear your throat all the time you want. Um, so I also want to ask you, now that you have two series under, under your belt here, what are some of the lessons that you've learned coming into tournament play? Has anything, uh, has, has, have you learned anything since being able to play on the stage twice now? Yeah, absolutely. Like this stage uh, makes me really nervous. Uh, it's really hard for me to play. Um, Optimally, I'd say. Um, and also, I think I really need to prepare um, not just uh, games, but really need to prepare physically as well, because this time I really got myself sick before the tournament. Um, couldn't get the rest I needed. And that was actually really costing me my first match, and it, I was really embarrassed by it. Um, hope, uh, glad, uh, luckily, we were uh, able to pick that up uh, today. And uh, yeah, I'm pretty fortunate to be standing beside you right now. <laughs> All right, well, you know what? In, in, in a sense, it doesn't really matter at this point. Tomorrow, just you, when you show up, you got to win. So tomorrow, your last opponent will be Amnesiac in the group before you advance to the top four. What are you going to do to prepare and you know, get ready for a tough opponent like him? Uh, Amnesia is definitely a really tough opponent and a player I really have respect for. But I'm really happy I'm going to play against him because uh, I feel like our first match wasn't really a great one. And I'm hoping uh, this time I can really redeem myself and that we can have a great match. 
All right, well, congratulations. You survived to the final day. Italian stays alive, taking down stalwart Chalky in order to get into the third place spot for his group at least. We'll see tomorrow if he can go all the way. In the meantime, we're going to go to sidebar with TJ and Raynet for some thoughts on the match. Thank you very much, Dan, and a big congratulations once again to Italian for moving on to the decider match tomorrow. That does mean Chalky has been the first player eliminated from Group A and the first player eliminated from the Winter Championships. Uh, so, Reyna, let, we could talk about the matches a little bit. Uh, Chucky went up 2-0 to zero and then fell three games in a row with the Shaman. So I want to get your thoughts on Shaman. And Chucky Shaman's a little bit different. So talk about uh, his exclusions and inclusions and what you thought of his deck. Yeah, I definitely feel like Shaman is a very high-tier deck to bring to the tournament. I can't fault him for bringing an aggressive Shaman list. Uh, I would have liked to see a slightly different build of it, though. His didn't seem to be overload-based. We didn't see the usual cards like Unbound Elemental, Ancestral, uh, Ancestral's Knowledge, uh, you know, Lava Shock, that whole package. He seemed to replace it with cards like Flame Tongue, Argent Horse Rider, Dr. Boom. So I, I feel like if his list was more traditional, it might have gone a little bit better. Yeah, and also the Haunted Creeper was an inclusion that, you know, not a lot of people, it comes with the Flame Tongue Totem, but um, yeah, a little bit different and didn't work out for him this time, but Shaman's still one of the top performers so far, even after that 0-3 uh, in the America's Championship. But let's uh, uh, switch gears a little bit. We're going to head over to uh, a moment from the first game, I believe, or the second game. It was the Druid versus Druid Mirror, where Shaki was faced with a tough decision of many good options. Uh, so he had some ramp. He's got the Innervating Coin in his hand. Uh, so walk me through the options here, Raynad, and tell me a little bit about why Chucky made the choice to go with the Innervate Coin uh, uh, Emperor Thorsan, or Innervate Emperor Thorsan instead of Emperor, uh, Innervate Coin into Dr. Boomer, Ancient of War. Well, he knows that, you know, if he, if he does go with the Innervate Thorsan, it's going to allow him to curve pretty well into his, into his seven drops and just kind of sequence his plays through the next couple turns in a, in a perfect way. Uh, some players might have gone for like a coin Azure Drake there or something like that, but it, it was uh, definitely a, a, if you think three turns ahead, like a lot of the good players playing at this level are, that Emperor Thorson is pretty clearly the best line there. Yeah, and uh, also um, was the fact that maybe Dr. Boom getting swept out by a BGH, a, a swing card like that, do you think that played into his decision at all? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, yeah, like if you innervate the seven drop there, it's like, one single big game hunter, or in the case of Ancient of Lore, it, it, you're just not developing that much board presence. You might as well just go for the Emperor Thorson and just have a strong play like three turns in a row instead of just having a strong play one turn and then kind of a subpar play after that. Yeah, well, this is uh, kind of a, a couple turns later, Chucky reaping the benefits of his decision. Let's take a look at the screenshot from three turns down the road where the Emperor Thorson was actually left on the board. You can see that's a four mana Dr. Boom in his hand a one mana swipe. So that's really just to show like what can happen when Emperor Thorsan's left on the board for that long. Yeah, I mean, that, that's just the power of Druid when when the board is left unchecked, you know. Emperor Thorsan is just one of those cards that gets out of hand very quickly and Talion just didn't really have a, a draw that could keep up with it. His is pretty clunky. Yeah, well, that's going to be Talion moving on to the decider match tomorrow and unfortunately Chalky has been eliminated. We have one more match here left on day two of the Hearthstone America Winners Championship. But uh, before we do that, before we jump into the last match, take a look at some of the highlights from that last game.